first came to Apostles, I was looking for what everyone is looking for with church. Like, I do need to get fed. I do need something out of this. And I don't want to call it like a transactional relationship. It's not a transaction, but I do need something. But the thing that I didn't know that I needed was I also needed to give. And I think I was in a lot of transactional type relationships with church up to this point. And with this, I feel like just being kind of a smaller and more hardworking and more creative congregation, like I've, I've literally had to help. It wasn't a question of like, it would be nice if you helped us. Like, we really need your help with this. And, and I have done that. It's, it's nice to be needed. Yeah. And um, it's nice to like be in a church. It almost feels, a, it, it feels a little bit like a family, like a sibling would need you to do something and they wouldn't really pause. If they need you to do something, they're going to ask for it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, Maybe a yeah. couple of times even. Yeah, exactly. That's how I felt here. Yeah, I I think that's wonderful to hear. Um, yeah, I, I think it's interesting just thinking about what you said about transaction and how you you were in a transaction relationship, but it actually wasn't asking enough of you. And you, you thought you were only taking um, and what you really what you really wanted was to be asked, you yeah. know, in a meaning of, for, for a meaningful purpose. And I, I, you know, grew up going to a really small church and my husband and I, Alex, we went to a really small church before we found apostles. Um, and I, yeah, I, I guess I took that for granted that kind of like um, family need-based fellowship. <laughs> mm-hmm. That, that is actually the only way to have a deep relationship with someone um, is to need them um, in some way. So, yeah. 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 How did you meet the Baltzers then? Um, the Baltzers always sit in front of me um, oh. at church. And so I, I sometimes I see... Uh, Milo and, and Basel kind of playing around or whatever. And I, I just, I, I know Daniel from around the place. Like we've said hi a few times and both work in the room. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, um, you know, those highs kind of turned into a conversation now and then. So, yeah. So anyways, I was talking with somebody in our church on um, just randomly um, on a, on a phone call and uh, she mentioned Karen and then I like did some math and I was like, oh, wait a minute. They live like right next to me. And I've, I've, oh, wow. I've literally like never, you know, going over to their house or whatever. And I just texted Daniel and um, yeah, it, it was, it was, um, huh. I think what I did was just, I, I asked him like, what do you need? Sounds like you're super busy. Um, I didn't even know at the time, you know, that like how big the need was. Yeah, it's just like, can you, you know, get the boys out of the house? And yeah, got the boys out of the house. And um, I might be getting my dates mixed up. But I think the first time I took them out of the house was the day Karen actually had uh, the baby. So, yeah, that's the story I heard. Yeah, yeah it was kind of like, literally, I was bringing them back. And like, the, you know, the house was just like going crazy. Just, so I got out of there. I didn't, I, <laughs> I felt like I had done my job. But um. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, you know, it, it was a small, very, very, very small act of service. And I don't think you can even call like playing basketball and soccer with some kids, like an act of service. I mean, that's something I would do by myself anyways. But um, I think, I don't remember when it was in 2020, Margaret, but there was this, there was this really weird defining point where I woke up and this, uh, kind of undertone of tiredness hit me and that tiredness I, I could really feel it like I could physically and emotionally feel it mm. and that tiredness was kind of working its way into like these relationships that I said you know I held so dear from church and stuff like that I haven't mm-hmm. seen these people in seven and you know eight months sometimes you know and like yeah zoom was cool for like two weeks like eight months of it, you know, on Thursday nights for a community group, like it gets, and I'm not complaining, but I'm saying there was like, there was something very, um, 
visceral and human and, and like life-giving that was kind of missing. Yeah. Anyway, I woke up and I was just like, I don't, I don't know if I made a purposeful decision on this, but hmm. maybe it was an indirect decision, but I was like, if I can help out and make a connection with someone, I'm going to do that. I don't care how inconvenient it is because like, if I don't do that, church is going to become yet another virtual solution in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, I have a yeah. job where I'm working 60 hours a week in front of three different computer monitors. And, you know, I'm on zoom calls three hours a day. Yeah. I can't have like church be that as well. I can't have my church family be like, I, I understand we need to do that as a congregation on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a difference between being there for somebody like, yeah, you know, let me know if you want to talk and you know, you're never going to tell, you know, you're never going to get on that zoom call and have a special conversation with someone because life is just so busy. And so I just made a decision, like show up, show up in the little things. And huh. that little thing that day happened to be, um, taking the boys out and playing soccer. And, um, yeah, you know, we, we did it a few other times and yeah, I've just tried to show up for people at church in some, some type of a tangible way, even when showing up in real life is not possible because yeah. of safety concerns. But I forget how you opened up this question, by the way, you said, oh yeah, you said, um, you said we're, were the distractions of before essentially taking the place of this intentionality that you could have in your life, but for whatever reason chose to not have it? I think that is part of the answer. I think there's another answer, and it's even more basic than that. Um, I had not done a lot of basic uh, Christian rhythmic things mm -hmm. before COVID. Um, and I, I, you know, I admit this, my devotion um, still to this day is spotty, but less spotty. Mm -hmm. My prayer life has always been okay. I would say now it's actually to a point where I'm not, I'm not saying like, check prayer life, yeah, yeah. Good, moving on, but it's, yeah, but it's in the direction of health. Yes. It's in a direction of health, fasting, um, Sabbathing. Um, the part, particular last two, Margaret, those are words I would have laughed at you for. Like, I, there's not a chance I'm going to miss a meal. In fact, if you talk about fasting, like, I'm going to eat a snack just yes. to, like, just yes. to like, take away that icky feeling that you're talking about. I'm going to eat an extra meal just for that. <laughs> um, so, it, 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 I don't know. I mean, like, I keep going back to this extra time that we've been allotted. And one of the things it was maybe a few months ago, I just had this, by the way, it coincided with that feeling of waking up and just wanting people in my life, not wanting pixelated people and mm -hmm. wanting to like do whatever I could to make a bridge. And if that means giving part of myself, my time, my skill set, money or whatever, great. That's what I'm going to do. So it coincided with that is, um, I've never felt really in control or ownership of my walk but I just woke up and I'm like, I want to take ownership of, of learning and pressing and growing into, um, into an area of like health to, to use your acronym or use your analogy. And, um, one of those has been like the discipleship class with Jamie Leahy. Um, and, I'm going to be dead honest with this. So we started like, uh, I, I think about seven weeks ago. And one of the first um, first things that we had to do was like, had to agree to, to Sabbath. Hmm. And I was not happy about that because I knew exactly how it would go. Like I, I know most of my work has gotten done. My personal work has gotten done on Saturday and Sunday. And I, I will definitely say it hasn't been easy, but again, like I would not have been intentional about that had it not been for um, hmm. 2020 and just the show that 2020 was. Um, I would not have done fasting if our church had not done it hmm. with me. And I did hmm. it. And like, it's not crazy. It's not about food so much. It's not about just like, Right. Starving yourself. It's about so much more. Um, I guess it's about feasting on something else other than yeah. food.
Yeah. And, uh, that was such a ridiculous concept if you talked to me a year and a half ago. I, I, I'm not going to say I would have laughed in your face, but I'm definitely not going to skip a meal because you think it's a great thing to do spiritually. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, sorry, I feel like I'm drowning yeah. on. I, no, I, no. Yeah, I definitely feel like much more um, receptive to wise people in my life saying, hey, try this on. <laughs> do this. Try this out. Um, and those are the, the, um, the Bible reading um, the very rhythmic prayer, fasting, and Sabbathing are kind of the four areas over the last four to five months that I've really, I've tried to press into very imperfectly, very haphazard at many times, um, yeah. not in a non-stylish way, but yeah. And cool. Well, yeah, here's to that and, and finding more of those things that make us really happy in Christ enjoying him deeply and enjoying those things deeply. 